it understood, boy. I am from the hood, boy. Came up from the dirt, dirt. Self-made hustler, I'm a beast. I'm a beast. I'm surrounded by all these devil mouths. They talking about kale. Some say I came from heaven, but I rose up from hell. Surviving R. Kelly aired January 3rd through 5th in 2019. Producer Dream Hampton and everyone involved in this scripted TV show committed fraud and violated constitutional rights of R. Kelly. The truth was avoided for ratings and money. Groupies who have sex with famous men were coached an entire year. They practiced a script with talking points to cry on cue as they told fairy tales with no hard evidence. No one went to the police report. No one had an open case. All to manipulate, brainwash the audience to appear as victims or survivors, even though at the time it was past the statute of limitations in their states. No one had evidence. No one reported a crime to the police. No one had an open criminal case pending in any court. There was no judication. They all bypassed therapists, doctors, police, judges, courts, laws, and the entire judicial system and went straight to prime time. They did talk shows, radio, reality TV, wrote books with stories that they could not substantiate. When you do a documentary, it implies truth. It implies fact check. It implies you vetted the stories, lie detector tests were given. You have done your due diligence to make sure what you're presenting to the American public is factual, that it can stand up in a court of law. What we have found from almost every person that appeared on that docu-series is they lied, they omitted truths, most had criminal backgrounds, most were known as thieves, liars, criminals, and they had uh, records. And those that did not have police records, we have found their lies, we have found inconsistencies in their stories, and we have demonstrated for the past two years that almost every person that appeared on Surviving R. Kelly committed fraud. Fame is a currency. Relevancy is a currency. Groupies became victims overnight for fame, money, and relevancy. These groupies hunted down a rock star in the music industry, a sex symbol in entertainment, the king of R&B, for the purpose of having sex with an idol. They hunted, chased, pursued, were willing to do anything with anyone to get past 20,000 other females in line to get to R. Kelly. They used manipulation, seduction, brainwashed him with sexual gymnastics and erotic acrobatics, group sex, menage de trois, to get the attention and stay in the life of one of the biggest musical artists of all time, R. Kelly. Everyone is talking about R. Kelly right now. Is that someone you'd be interested in taking on on your podcast? Uh, I would like to talk to R. Kelly on any forum, in any platform, as long as there are no holes barred. Mm. Because I don't talk to people with things off limits. Um, and I've spent a lot of my professional career developing skill sets in deception detection mm. and getting to the truth once you decide if there has been deception. I would like very much to talk to him. I've talked to some people that allege to be victims of his, mm -hmm. and I have not run those interviews yet mm -hmm. because I don't know where the truth is. Mm -hmm and I don't run gossip. Mm -hmm. uh, until I find out the truth, I won't run those interviews. I like that. Um, so you are Dr. Phil. 
When R. Kelly lost interest in these empty sexual escapades, the disgruntled groupies and ex-sex partners went on television to play victim and survivor. Some were paid to appear in this fictitious TV show. Others were compensated in other ways. Sparkle, for instance, had a song produced by Big Shiz, who is mega producer for Michael Jackson, Beyonce, and other A-list artists. He would have never worked with a one-hit wonder, and the one hit that she had was written by R. Kelly. Publicists for Surviving R. Kelly also worked on the show Growing Up Hip Hop, and they got Drea and Robert's kids on the reality show. Lisa Van Allen, Kitty Jones, and others wrote books, all prepared for selling the minute the show aired. All did press, TV, radio, blogs, award shows, red carpet events. For the first time, we were seeing groupies become victims. When the cameras turned on, and presented, they presented themselves as advocates to other survivors, even though most said they were not victims. Nobody went to therapy. Nobody had any credentials to be an advocate. Their stories weren't even vetted. Surviving R. Kelly, Dream Hampton, and everyone involved in this fictitious scripted TV show not only committed fraud with lies of omission, they also took the law into their own hands. No lie detector tests were given. No one was vetted. Social media has pulled up criminal records, exposed lies with a simple Google search. The show left out 90% of the facts and then called itself a docu-series. Documentary implies everything was fact-checked, vetted. Documentary is synonymous with truth. Yet you're hard-pressed to find truth in this salacious, fictitious, fraudulent television program that everyone benefited from financially. Drea, the ex-wife of R. Kelly, said she had trouble in her marriage. She did not present any police records. She did not present any pictures with her having scars or video of her having wounds on her body. She had nothing to corroborate her story. I worked in the home with Robert and Drea. They did not have a regular marriage. They slept in separate bedrooms. She was closer to a roommate than a wife. She had no access to his money. Her name wasn't on anything. And as they slept in separate bedrooms, she slept in her room with backup dancers, Angie and China, even when Rob was out of town. The former road manager mentioned in his book Drea was the one on a sex tape with Rob raising her leg behind her head as she played with her clit and corkscrewed on Rob's penis. Another member of Rob's band or backup group said on the tour bus he would see Drea and two other dancers or three other dancers go into the room with Rob and all slept with Rob. I saw, with my own eyes, Drea coming from her bedroom every morning with another female. And yet she said, no one was in the house. He never had another woman around her. She lied. If she lied about that, what else is she lying about? She said she never saw the sex tape. I know that she's the one that introduced me to Roshana Landfair. Roshana was over the house frequently. 
Andrea introduced her to me as her goddaughter. Roshana babysat Joanne. There's no way that Drea would know Roshana and not have looked at that sex tape in all these years. Another lie. Everything that Drea said was unsubstantiated. She lied. She presented herself as a regular wife when in fact it was a marriage of convenience. It was an arranged marriage. Nothing more. She was one of the dancers and there were three other dancers. Okay, and I guess her and the other dancers, they were all sleep with R. Kelly in the back of the bus. Together. Well, well <laughs> basically, I mean, because it was, I mean, I'm sure, sure you've seen the tour bus. Everybody who does music has seen the tour bus. There's a back room and then there's a bunch of bunks. So, we had bunks. And he stayed on the back room and all the girls stayed with him. I was exposed. His wife and I was exposed to that app. That's how many, uh, uh, Sex on camera, she been with, 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 with another woman. Ask her if she ever performed a sex act in front of a whole group of people. You know, while people walking in with him. I mean, like, let's get right down to it. You want to tell the truth, tell the whole truth. Sparkle said in every interview, her relationship with Robert was professional. They never were involved. We heard from Earl Robinson of Public Announcement that he was married to Sparkle, that he was in a relationship with her and she began having sex with R. Kelly. She left Earl for Robert. She came to Rob's house when I was there one day in a see-through skirt wearing black panties with another female. They went up to the master bedroom and didn't come back out. I've been in that room and there's only a, ma a king size bed in the room. You do the math. I saw photos of Sparkle and four other females naked engaging in what appeared to be group sex. Menage de Trois and other scandalous behavior. At 53 years old, Sparkle is obsessed with R. Kelly to this day and profits from giving interviews to keep her name relevant in the music industry. We heard from Dre from Public Announcement. He brought Sparkle uh, to Robert in a tape and Robert said she would have to sleep on the sto uh, couch in the studio for him to produce her music. She left her husband Earl to be with R. Kelly and R. Kelly was secretly married to Drea. Sparkle didn't know about that. She didn't know that he was married. She didn't find out until 1999 and that is when she separated from him. She had a huge falling out in 1999, long before the tape was released. So she had motive to lie about who was on that tape. The latest single on Jive Records entitled Honey Love. A great welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for R. Kelly.
Okay. Because me and Earl worked on her demo. Got it. It was hot. And Earl says to me, he says, hey, take this to Kills. I'm like, not a good idea. I said, it's not a good idea. And he was like, yes, it is. You know, I'm married to it. It's, it's good. So I said, okay. So I took the demo down there. He listened to it. He said, oh, man, it's hot. Yeah, but I'm going to have to do this myself. He said, and I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm going to have to produce this all myself and write it. He said, y'all did some good work, but I'm going to do this on my own. So he said, you know, I'll do this, but, you know, it's going to have to be no Earl, no nothing. She's going to have to come down here. If she want an album done, she's going to have to sleep on this studio couch for 30 days, and that's the only way I'm doing it. So I go back and I tell her. And he doesn't believe me. He's like, no, no, it's going to be good. I say, Earl, she's never coming back. He said, yes, she is. It's good. So, Rob, I'm at, I'm at the studio one day. Rob said, call up uh, Steph and say, can she come down and do some vocals? And this was around the time she was doing vocals on Aaliyah's album. See what I'm saying? So it wasn't even about her album. She was just coming to do background vocals. So she came and did that. And shortly after that, it was it was no more her and her. It was, it was a rap. So you guys are... You guys are in a group with Earl, Earl's wife, goes and starts working with R. Kelly, and never goes back to Earl again. Right. Roshana Landfair is 35 years old at the time of surviving R. Kelly, yet she did not appear on the TV show. Her mother and father did not appear on the show. In 2008, Roshana, her mother, and her father all signed legal documents stating she was not in the video. She was not the one on the sex tape. Those are formal legal documents, her sworn testimony. She did not appear in Surviving R. Kelly. How do you keep calling someone a victim for 20 years who stated for 20 years they're not a victim? Sparkle, the estranged aunt, has had zero contact with Roshana for years, but kept trying to convince Roshana that she's a victim. Even when the show aired Surviving R. Kelly, Sparkle talked about Roshana. Roshana, her mother, nor her father appeared on the show, which means they did not see Roshana as being a part of this case. How did she get to Kim Fox in three days? The show aired on the 5th. By the 8th, Kim Fox opened an investigation. She was solicited. She was brainwashed. She was manipulated. She was incited to lie because her sworn testimony stands. The case in 2008 acquitted Robert Kelly. So she never went to the police and said she's a victim. Her parents never went to the police. She did not appear on Surviving R. Kelly. The only way she could have gotten in front of Kim Fox, they coerced her. Lisa Van Allen on every talk show says she had sex with R. Kelly when she was underage, that she moved in with him and lived with him in his house, that she had sex with underage females. Lisa Van Allen was born June 11, 1980, which would have made her 18 at the time that she met R. Kelly. R. Kelly did a video in Atlanta in 1998, Home Alone. He shoots his videos one to two months before airing. The show was aired August 30th, 1998, which means at the time Lisa Van Allen met R. Kelly, she was 18 years old. She stated she met him, she got his phone number. She didn't call him until months later to come to Chicago. She was well into being an 18 year old at that time. 
She claimed she had sex in his trailer, but that cannot be substantiated. So it's hearsay and conjecture. She cannot prove it. In July of 1998, Lisa Van Allen was 18 and an adult based on the law in Illinois. If she had sexual relationships with an underage female, as she claimed she had, then she was committing sex crimes against minors, which has no statute of limitations. Kim Fox didn't try to indict her. Lisa Van Allen, we have in court records, extorted $250,000 from Rob after she stole a sex tape and then sold it back to him. She stole a $40,000 Rolex. She lied on every interview claiming to live in his house, but when I stated I worked in his house during that time period and Drea was living there, she changed her story to I lived at the studio. If she did not receive mail at that studio, which she did not, that was not her living address. Lisa Van Allen was homeless. She was without a place to live and she would stay wherever she could, have sex with whoever she had to as a means of survival. That is not on Robert Kelly. That is on Lisa Van Allen. She is known to have had sex with other females in the studio and have been having group sex and menage de trois with Robert for years. She never went to the police. She never went and said she was a victim. She was a part of a case where she's the one that stole the tape, extorted money, and committed a crime. She said she took the tape because she was on it and didn't want him to have a tape of her. Yet, she had, a, but when asked why did she not uh, remove her from the tape, she said, I was not on that tape. So she stole a tape for the purpose of extorting money from him. Lisa Van Allen has a criminal record. She lied about her age uh, when she had sex with Robert. She lied about her testimony in the 2008 trial. She was not a credible witness. She's lied many times in interviews since then. Dre from Public Announcement said she would be in the studio. She'd walk in with other men around Rob in her panties. She's a studio hoe, yet she presented herself as a victim and a survivor. She had sex with a rich, famous man because she was homeless and wanted to come up and was looking for any way to get some money. She prostituted herself. She was a whore. And yet now, 20 years later, she wants to present herself as a victim, a survivor, an advocate. Lisa Van Allen is a criminal. Great. You said that you've seen Lisa Van Allen around a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said that she was doing crazy stuff. Yeah, I think this was when she was grown because around the home a long time, if you researched this, I wasn't in that video. So this is the time she say she met him. So I think maybe, I don't know how long it was after that, but then, yeah, then I came back around and then I seen her around. And, you know, she was doing her, you know, she's doing her thing. I mean, I mean, I mean to the point where, <laughs> where, I mean, dude is, <laughs> it's too late. Dude is very, like, you know, he wanted his way. So I, I, I just tell you one thing. Um, we're sitting in the studio, you know, and they got the console thing in the middle, the couches on the back, big board in front, and all of a sudden, she would just walk in with, like, just some panties on and stand in front of the board and just stand there. She might have a top or whatever on, but just standing there, like, you know, whatever, and for, for all of us in there to pretty much view, it was that type of thing. I Demetrius Smith burglarized people's homes. He sold drugs. 
He's been in and out of prison his entire life. He was in jail before he met Robert. He was in jail when he worked for Robert. And he was in prison after he worked for Robert. He has no legal form of income other than the time frame that he worked for R. Kelly, which was approximately two years. He lies about the dates. He lies about how long he was with Robert. He was stealing money from Robert, and Robert fired him. He admitted in his book he stole money from Robert. He admitted in his book he went to prison for burglarizing homes. He went to prison for stealing merchandise out of Target. He went to prison for selling drugs. He's done more prison time than he's done regular work time. He is the least credible person to give testimony on R. Kelly. Yet he's speaking on surviving R. Kelly as if he's a credible, viable witness. Demetrius Smith is a career criminal, a liar, a fraud. Kitty Jones claims she lived with Robert, but was a studio groupie. What the room that she described when she said she was at his house is the room that's in his studio. She spoke of a black leather couch. That's the couch that was in the council room where Rob worked. He never had a black leather couch in his home. So when she says she lived with him, she slept in his studio. She slept on a couch because she was homeless and without a job. She's been caught in countless lies, yet she writes a book about being a survivor. Anyone can tell a lie long enough, and if you believe it, they start to believe it too. These females have profited from having sex with R. Kelly, yet they're all groupies, whores, criminals, and liars. Just about everyone who appeared in Surviving R. Kelly has been exposed as a liar, a criminal, a groupie, a prostitute, a felon. They all broke the law, committing fraud, slander, violating constitutional rights of R. Kelly, as they accused him of being a criminal. They labeled him a monster, a predator, criminal sexual assault, of rape of a minor. But in doing so, they put his life at risk with these baseless allegations that never saw the inside of a courtroom. Believe women, believe black girls, protect our black girls was how they programmed viewers into bypassing the law and focusing on these alleged victims. Surviving R. Kelly producer Dream Hampton and everyone involved in this TV scripted show committed fraud, violated constitutional rights of R. Kelly. Surviving R. Kelly, Dream Hampton, and everyone involved became domestic terrorists, cyber terrorists, using social media as a weapon of mass destruction. They put R. Kelly's life at risk, referring to him as a monster, a predator, a pedophile. They violated his constitutional rights and due process to a fair trial, to face his accusers. In all 50 states, the law says you are presumed innocent. It is not your burden to prove your innocence. It is the burden of an accuser to prove your guilt. They created a violent atmosphere of cyberbullying, pressure, bully threats, financial retaliation if people didn't stand with black girls. Out the gate, they brainwashed America with guilt, saying, no one cares about black girls. Black girls are the last to get justice in America. This was a mindfuck. This was to guilt people into believing the story that they told so that groupies could be passed off as victims, so that we could ignore the laws and the constitutional rights, so that we didn't challenge any story, we didn't ask for evidence, we didn't even question the females for fear of being called victim shaming. You'll be viewed as a racist if you dare question these black girls or ask for evidence. Surviving R. Kelly broke the law. 
surviving R. Kelly incited lawless behavior from its audience. They convinced the public to ignore the law, ignore the constitutional rights that are the bedrock of this country. Don't follow the law. Believe black girls instead of following the law. Even if they're lying, even when they have no evidence, even when they leave 90% of the story out, even though this violates our constitution, it breaks the law, and it violates due process for R. Kelly. It violated the law in all 50 states that say he is presumed innocent. Believe black girls is not the law. Presumed innocent is the law. Believe Black Girls was advertised all over social media and mainstream media. The overt and subliminal message was shaped to play on the guilt of white people. You never protect black girls. You're a racist for having not spoke up for black girls. So white America didn't dare question any black female for fear of victim shaming, for fear of being labeled a racist. If you, were willing, if you weren't willing to break the law, you couldn't be on this fictitious, fraudulent te television show. Former staff of R. Kelly's were eliminated even though they recorded their stories for six hours and they were filmed, but because they refused to slander R. Kelly, their stories were left out. We heard from Rick from public announcement that his story was recorded, but they didn't put it in because he refused to say anything bad about R. Kelly. In this scripted, fraudulent television show, critical information was left out to tilt this fictitious show to paint Robert as a monster, a criminal for crimes that were never reported. They aggressively hunted, stalked, harassed, and put R. Kelly's life in danger. Surviving R. Kelly was not a documentary. It was not a docu-series. It was as fictitious and fraudulent as the Flintstones, as Gilligan's Island, as any other TV show we see on television. This is the greatest sham the country has seen. Females have been portrayed as victims who were groupies, gold diggers, and prostitutes and whores. This is an affront to every female who has truly gone through something, who has truly been a victim, who has truly been assaulted in this country. Surviving R. Kelly, Dream Hampton, the producers, and those that appeared on the show committed fraud. It is a lie. It is a scripted television show. People were paid. They were given television shows on a reality show, such as Growing Up Hip Hop for Drea. They were given a record produced by uh, huge producers, Sparkle with Big Shiz. They made sure their books were ready, such as we saw with Lisa Van Allen, Kitty Jones, and the rest. All were ready to profit by the time the show aired. This was a spin machine, the likes of which we've never seen. It's a juggernaut. It went into overdrive. They had one mission, destroy the king of R&B so that all of us can profit and become rich and famous. It was nothing more than fraud. Surviving R. Kelly was illegal. Dream Hampton broke the law. She's a criminal. Those that appeared on there committed fraud. They're criminals. 
and we all must see to it that everyone that participated in surviving R. Kelly has criminal charges brought on them. Surviving R. Kelly was a fraud.